ruins, that's poverty's a bitch. So, finally getting down to the command line code. So, a little bit of uh, detail here. Uh, I have started a file called globals. So, in this, I moved the color text uh, line up here. I did a global boolean quit equals zero, so zero faults, one true. If it's true, then we quit out of the game. This is just going to be a major one. Um, so anytime there's errors or crashes, it's going to, uh, when we get into save load, we'll, we'll spit out a, a, a log and then quit. Um, this way you can look at the error log and find out what happened. Um, then there's another boolean, which is a global single keystroke mode equals true. So this means, uh, you know, it's like no matter where you are in the game, this is going to be a global one that you can change. Uh, so it's going to basically start off with key single keystroke, um, and then hit enter, maybe a few other commands. We'll switch it to command line. This is where you can... Uh, depending on what mode the game is in, whether you're playing, or whether you're designing, or whether you're testing, or just, you know, you want to run some of your own hack codes, uh, some cheat codes, you can switch to it. So that's what this one is. Uh, you can switch to the command line. And I grabbed this one out of another one, which actually has server client code. And I thought, you know, hey, command line should have no more than 256 characters. Um, I probably should shorten that. But there we've got a uh, global definition. So this one, anytime it's all caps, it's predefined as a very specific value. If you want to change it, come into globals and change the values you want. This could be the damage of a sword. This could be how much health you regenerate. Uh, it could be how crazy the storms are, etc. Uh, later on, we could uh, output this into a different file um, that could be a text file that people edit so that they can decide what they want. Um, and then when it runs, it goes in and pulls out this information. And of course, the intro. I moved it off into the intro area. There's more to go, but uh, this allows for the new code. Uh, keystroke, I will finish this up at the end. So there's the intro. So globals are first, then the intro. So single keystroke is a function. It's all the way at the bottom. So here at the bottom, beyond the close of that one, is single keystroke as well as key command. For now, these two functions are in the main.cpp, uh, the new game 2015. So that way, we don't have to be jumping back and forth between files to test. All right, so in order of doing so, I have to put it up here. And later on, it'll become an include file. So after intros, we, we've, we may have to put this up before the intros because uh, we'll be doing keystrokes. Maybe we'll get keystrokes. Anyways, we may just hard code the intro. Now, one of the details is that uh, I'm going to cover as much as needs to be in text, uh, like for text games, before I go into 2D and 3D, because that's exactly where everyone wants to be. Again, this is making your own game engine from scratch, and I'm pointing out one step after another. So from here, you can make your own. You could easily just grab a third-party software. You could download it. You could just drag and drop your own game and then output a game that looks like everybody else's. But if you don't do this, eh, you know, hey, you just re rely upon your own uh, OCD and your own um, obsession with quality, which most people don't have. They, they just, meh. So, uh, anyways, getting back to the topic at hand, when you get through, you get all this done, you have a better understanding of what, what it takes, what you want to do, and what your actual capabilities are. So, moving on. So, game starts. There's the intro. We have a I count uh, integer counter. Um, so here we go. Stating the uh, global boolean single keystroke starts as one. 
This is the character keystroke, single keystroke. This one is an array. That is why there's an A at the beginning. And it is 256 characters long because we have defined it as of yesterday. Today is the 23rd. Um, I'll be probably posting this a lot later. No, I'll be posting this as soon as I get done. Um, so there we go. And as of this date. So if I update it, then I know it's out of date. Because um, I've time stamped it. All right, moving on. Integer typing counter. So as we do a single keystroke in line command, we want to spit this out so that when we rewrite the line, that it appears exactly as it is. So let's continue on. Press Q to quit or hit enter and then type quit all lower cases. And then back to normal color text. So we start the engine, counter is zero, counter is I. This is the one that counts to 9,000. And we are going to output our text plus a space and then the counter. So it's going to continually count to show that the system is running. You hit a keystroke, it captures that keystroke, and then from there we need to test to see what mode we're in. So if we're in single mode, it equals one, then we take single keystroke and we send it the key. So single keystroke is down here. So it jumps on down, it renames it as ch keystroke. Uh, if it equals, stop it, go away, stupid thing. Uh, if it's Q, we set the global to quit, and we're done. If it equals 13, 13 is the enter key. Uh, on another computer, uh, the number pad enter key was 271. On this one, I think 13 is for both. I don't know if that's my keyboard or whether it's just default. That's the way code block works. Both keys equal 13 when it imports, inputs uh, information. So it may be just my, my keyboard. It goes to the uh, controller, and from there it sends a signal to the computer. So it could be just unique to my specific keyboard, uh, which wouldn't take too much. Or ch keystroke equals 271. And a single character to e equal a number, that number is an ASCII character. You can actually do a full for loop and run through 256, 1480, whatever number you want, and it can print out all the characters and all the symbols so that you can actually see what you're working with. There's quite a few of them there. So you can actually nail down exactly what character you want. And there's some really cool ones. It's the exact same as when you go to the command line prompt in DOS. Um, you'd have to go here. Let's go command, command. So yeah, we're basically building our own version of this. Hold down Alt, 271, and there's your symbol, or 13. Uh, yeah, you hold down Alt. How weird. Uh, I have Windows 7, so that doesn't work right. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Hey, that's a cool symbol. 22, 23, 24, um, 0, 13. There we go. Three characters at once. 0, 1, 3. Interesting. I wonder if I have to put a 0 in front of it. 271. 0, 271. Anyways, so we're basically, that is DOS we're playing with, and we're basically remaking the whole thing for ourselves, but uh, the way we want it. So here we go, keystroke, back to this. So if it's the enter key, enter key is the one that sets it back to command line. So this sets it to single keystroke, false. No, we want command line. And then it says press enter to exit. Uh, no. Um, Dun, dun, dun. 
So this lets us know that we're now into a command line. We could um, put in our own command line. We can get fancy. I'm going to leave it up to you to do as you see fit. And then it's done. It returns void. So going back, uh, if, it, if it's one, keystroke, throw the keys in. And what we're actually doing on it is testing for one simple thing, Q. All we're looking for is Q. Uh, we can get fancy. If it's not Q, we can give them another response. This character is not available, blah, blah, blah. This command is not acceptable. If it's the enter key, we move on to key command. All right. And going back, it says else, we, we need a test just in case. Else, if it's zero, what is it? Forgot what I did. Uh, we want to keep adding letters to our array if the key is not an enter key. So if it's, you know, keystroke mode, we're in key command or um, command line. If we're in command line um, and it's not, and the new character is not an enter key, we want to add that to our array. So this key will equal whatever our counter is, I typing number is, and then we increase it. So the next time it comes through, it keeps adding to the end of this array. But if it is an enter key, by now we've stacked up a nice little line, we send it off to key command, and we call it a player typing. Down here, a player typing, we're comparing, string compare. If not string compare, and it's, we compare what's in this string to the word quit. If it's true, then it does this. Else, this command is not recognized. System pause. And then we switch it back to single keystroke. Now, uh, there's a command called to lower. Oh, it's to lower. And let's see. Yep. And we want to put in a player typing. Dink. Which means that if we do caps, lowercase, caps, lowercase, caps, lowercase, this is going to set all of it to lowercase. And that's for the array. And then from there, we don't have to worry about if they get funky, whether it's quit or capital quit. It's all going to be lowercase. And if it, if it matches, we quit. If not, don't recognize it and switch back. We go back. And now we want to set the I type counter to zero because we start over at the beginning of the line because we've already sent our command. Um, and then we want to clean out our array. So int i because it's going to die after this for loop and it's a single line. So i less than oops, i less than our maximum. So as we change that, it, we don't break any code. Followed by, so we start at zero. We set it to zero, as in zero being a blank space, being void, being null, being nothing. So the letter equal to zero. Now it's not character zero. It's not word zero. It is number or to the character, which is a number zero. It's, it's null, it's void. So we basically write everything blank. So we could type up to 256 characters. And somewhere, let's see, where is it? Oh, I thought I said it, so that's, I didn't add that. Okay, apparently, so um, we need to throw that in. So I'll make a note of that. Nope, it needs to go up to here. We need to make sure that I typing counter doesn't exceed exceed max client the max client text. 
So, there we go. Uh, that will be just another time I can easily update it. So, let's continue on, shall we? And then it clears out. And then it tests. So we'll continue running this application as long as the global value for quit is equal to zero. And it's a boolean. Once done, it uh, starts a new line, bunch, or uh, it goes to the beginning, does a bunch of spaces, new line, thank you for playing. And then pauses. So let's make sure everything's working. Oh, to lower. Because I did not use meh. There's an include I need for this. Valid character to integer. Really? Man, I gotta learn how to use that one again. I think you have to do it one character at a time. So you literally have to build a little loop saying to lower, to lower, to lower, and redo the whole freaking uh, array one letter at a time. Simple enough to write, but I'm not gonna bore you. So let's try this again, shall we? Dink. One warning. Compare is always false. It shouldn't be. It's either this or that. Shouldn't be a problem. Anyways, yeah, I've noticed this. I, I'm thinking it's it's the uh, graphical user interface. Um, so let's get rid of that warning. Let's tr yep, there it is compiled. And now let's run it. So as you can see, the new color text. So here we go. It's hard to read. Press Q to quit, or hit Enter to. So W E. I, I can hit all sorts of things. How about Q? Thank you for playing. So it quits out. Let's run it again. This time, da 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 da. Enter. It's continue and run. We could say hello. Hello, my baby. Hello, my darling. And it cleared out the line. So we can hit Q. And it quits. Let's try that again. So let's get to here and let's say. Is. Nope, didn't recognize it. Back to single keystroke. Hit enter. Nope, didn't recognize it. Help. Now, I do want to do make help commands, but right now, I'm not going to bother with it. So, quit. Thank you for playing the game. So there you go. We can, at this point, now clean this up. Uh, as for help commands, the way I do it is down here in the key commands, it comes in, the first thing it does is test to see if the very first thing is a slash. If it is a slash, then it, I'd kick it out to another one called slash commands. And then from there it'd be like slash help. Um, and there's a lot more parsing that needs to go on. For example, I... Uh, I set this up so that we get parsing land, uh, parsing command line working. So, uh, so it basically comes down and it will split out the words. You know, it checks for every space because. Oh, excuse me. Because one of the things we didn't test for is hello quit. It didn't recognize it. So one thing it should do is quit Bob. Did not recognize the command because it was longer than that. So we literally have to parse out each word up to the space. So it bleh, single keystroke Q. So there you go. There's a lot more to be done. And I'm going to leave it up to you guys to figure out how to parse it out. It's real simple. You basically search for a single character of a space um, and if it does so then you switch to what you're doing is you're going to switch to a three-part array first one will be the command second one will be second command and third one can be a very long string 
So such messages as um, help, um, I don't know, health. Or maybe you're like, what is HP? Help on HP. Uh, it will parse out that it's a slash help or a slash command, removes that, then goes into a um, slash command and it searches for that word up to a single space. So this will be in the first array, second array, and then if there's anything else, it goes into the third array. Um, this way you can say, tell Bob you are a boop. And this will appear in the third array, and it's just a, a, a message. It's just going to appear as a message. This is the slash command and based on the slash command it's going to look at the second one and then search to find out where Bob is and then send him the following message. So that is how it's going to work. Um, without the search uh, slash we do things like get, I don't know, gold. So this would basically be a command of get item and it'll search uh, the items in the room for that specific item. And of course, you can always just be real simple and you just have the letter G equal get. It pulls up a list and then from there you say, hey, what do you want? It's uh, these are the five items in the room. Which number do you want? Or the letter A for all. And you pick them up if you can hold them all. So anyways, that is uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, from here, oh, well, from here, uh, I need to s <laughs> take all of these and stick them in their own file. So th both of these are now going to disappear into a new file, which is, uh, I'm going to call it that. There's no header. There's nothing that needs to be defined. And do I use any globals in it? Yes, I do. So, uh, well, yeah, let's get that going, shall we? New text document. V. Yes, I want to change that. Open this up. Created. It's going to be today, November 23rd, 2015. Great door. Poverty is a bitch. bitch. And purpose. To make it a single I didn't delete them all. <laughs> that would be stupid. Whoop. Dink. Dink, dink. Dink, 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 dink. Let's compile and make sure everything runs right. Lovely. There we go. Quit. I'm convinced it works. So there you go. There is command line and it will become very huge and very powerful as you add more features and more commands to it. Um, one other thing that uh, needs to be taken into consideration is settings. How are you going to change your key commands? For example, I plan to have the single keystroke <coughs> that most everyone else does of the WSAD. WASD for up, down, left, right. So, uh, how would you set it in settings? To test for it. Um, that's going to be another sh uh, another application, another another tutorial. So there you go. I'm now wrapping this one up. So with that, a few things I want to mention. 
is that even though this is programming, and a lot of people are like, ah, you just got to put all, all your time in and just get things done. Well, actually, uh, uh, there's a reason why most people work for two hours and then take a break, and then work another two hours, and then go to lunch. Work another two hours, take a break, another two hours, then go home. You get at eight hours in a day. Usually beyond that, the quality of your, your mental capability drops rapidly. And if you, like, I, I used to sit at the computer and I would just program and program and program and the first day I could easily put in 13, 14 hours and be feeling well accomplished. Uh, no breaks, no nothing, I just hit it hard and move on. Uh, and then, like, the next day I'll put in 12 and feel good. Next day, 10, 8 after that, 6 after that, and then after a while I just, I'm too tired, I can't even get out of bed. It literally is... You know, I, I've seen where I'm hyper motivated and I put in, you know, 160 hours in the first month. You know, unemployed, I've got nothing better to do than, you know, after getting done calling up places, dropping off a few resumes, coming back and getting into programming because I'm like, this game's going to, it's going to make me money. Well, um, no, I kind of burned myself out. So like the second month, I barely broke 90 hours. And then on the third month, I threw in the towel because I was I was spent, I was burnt, I was done, I was exhausted. Uh, so you really do have to ha you know pay attention to mental health. I mean, you, you put in two hours or whatever it takes for you to wrap things up. You can't exactly just stop in the middle of things and you because you lose track of names and what you're doing and where you're going. When there's a stopping point, take a break. Don't forget to come back. Minor details. So yeah. Uh, the second thing is with programming, no one ever starts out and becomes a pro. After a while you get the concept and you know each time you write, like I've written this code over and over and over again. Uh, and I've started making what I call um, my own little archive. Let's see, where is it? Um, templates, no it's not that. This is the old application I used to use. But uh, anyways, um, well, I don't see it. Uh, I've got my own uh, archived file, like a master archive, and it says, uh, um, you know, like hello world is one of them. You just copy paste, it does the hello world thing. Then there's hello time, hello server client, hello uh, parsing, hello color text, you know, I've got them so that it's like I don't have to rewrite them, I just copy and paste. But each time I do it, I get, uh, I push my bounds, I, I see how much further I get with this. So, uh, this I think is as complex as I need to get. Because when you start introducing the mouse, you're really not going to do too much typing. Um, it kind of takes over. All you need the keyboard for single stroke uh, keyboard shortcuts. Uh, your controls and your alts and you know shift commands that kind of stuff but this is the place to start um, let me just check to see if there's anything else I'm missing before I end this one I've already talked about the uh, slash commands you could break those away um, let's see character name saving that's going to be another one so the next video I'm going to do a recording about will be designing a game, talking about planning, um, and just no matter how much design, like I've got a big old, you'll see it next video, uh, no matter how much I've designed and written down, it, it's kind of, you never answer all your questions until you start coding. Once you start coding, then it's... The questions arise like, well, I, I didn't think about this. You know, you, an idea comes up or you're typing something. Like, hey, wouldn't it be nice if you could do this other thing? And you, that's called feature creep. You start adding extra features. <clears throat> but the whole thing is you can design only so much before you actually have to get to the code. And you won't design everything. But having a good idea. Most people, for example, this game is going to be... Uh, like I mentioned before, this is going to be a sword and shield game uh, to just start somewhere. There's many different games. I mean, I love Command and Conquer. I love EverQuest. I love, you know, Freelancer. I love, you know, the trading games where you, you buy yourself a ship and, you know, you do your trading and build a bigger ship and fight off 
uh, other other players, and etc. It's good stuff, but we got to start somewhere. And um, so most games that I've written is just basically mimicking other games that I really like, um, and that's a great place to start. And you just have to start somewhere and build upon it. You know, you could reminisce. I'm like, I want to make my own Zelda game. Great, make your own Zelda. Um, it, you know, it's it's good practice. Most musicians they spend their entire life uh, practicing other people's work, and that's fine. But eventually, there's going to be a point where it's like you've got enough experience. You're now going to change it. You're going to make it your own characters, your own story. You're going to throw your friends in into it and and tell a little personal story and make it entertaining. And it, it's going to be an adventure. So blah 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 blah. But pick something. Pick something very small, something very simple, and just keep it simple. Uh, and in time, it will grow, because you'll start off, you'll learn something, and on the next version, you'll make, you'll improve it. But this is a growing experience. Both you will grow as well as your game. So as you make more games, they will get better and better. Don't expect a Grand Theft Auto the very first time you code. And that is about it. So next we'll be talking about design. And I think one week would be plenty. So next week I'll be posting that. And I'll be posting these every Sunday night, Monday mornings. And that's it. Thank you for watching. And hopefully this has been helpful. I will catch you later.